As our national birthday approaches, thoughts turn to fireworks, food, and flag waving. But I hope this 4th of July, you have time for a little reflection, too. A week ago, my son, son son-in-law, and a friend took a short trip to our nearest communist neighbor. With a missionary, they brought in half a ton of flour, rice, beans, medical supplies, hygiene products, etc., for the Christians there. Except for the ruling class, everyone is starving. But the Christians are at the bottom of the list. When the locals saw the rice, something they hadn't seen in a month, they wept. That might be a good place for our socialist university professors to live for a while. Let them ponder life as they sit in the line at the gas station for two and a half days and then pay five dollars a gallon. Let them crow over the health care system where a believer told how he uses the same syringe for his wife's injections four times a day for a month or delight in the care provided a boy with a broken arm who had cardboard tied around it with rags. In spite of all its problems, America is still the most blessed place on earth. But who would dispute that our nation faces huge challenges? One of the most alarming trends is the growing superficiality of society. Band-Aid solutions to soul-deep problems never work. We allow schools to teach our children that the universe is a cosmic accident. What do we expect them to conclude? That they have a purpose? Hardly. Have you seen the street interviewer who asks random people to name three disciples of Jesus? Blank stares. Then Could they name the Kardashians? Of course they could. William Cooper might have been describing our society. Quote, Ceremony leads her bigots forth, prepared to fight for shadows of no worth, while truths on which eternal things depend can hardly find a single friend. If only we could turn away from this obsession with outer beauty, the all-consuming passion for the latest whatever, and the quest for fame, power, and status. Quote, All of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Ecclesiastes 1.14 We sometimes hear about our national debt in the multiplied trillions, But did you know household debt in America has now passed 17 trillion? Gotta have it, and gotta have it now. Here's God's portrait of America today, although written 2,500 years ago. Quote, You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. That's Haggai 1, verses 6 and 7. So this weekend... See if you can set aside the angst and activities for a little while. Find a quiet spot. Then try these four soul restorers. Number one, just rest a moment in the love of God. Number two, give thanks for all we have. Number three, examine your heart to be sure You possess eternal life, not just profess to be a Christian. And number four, rise up 
with a renewed commitment to be an agent of God's love and truth in our needy nation. Quote, All nations will be blessed through him, and they will call him blessed. Psalm 72, verse 17.